Okay. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome everybody here for the second sharing event. It's going to be shared by Jiaying today on the topic of systematic literature review. So I'm going to pass the mic to Jiaying now. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see we have one more participant for today's meeting. And now I'm going to start. Can you all see my screen? Well, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, can I have my breakfast as oh, you? Oh, yeah, 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 please. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. okay. So today my topic is uh, uh, conducting literature review. It's more like a systematic literature review, but let's see. Okay. So I want to start uh, my presentation of why I pick this topic. But first, I think it's really uh, relevant of uh, what we have learned last meeting two weeks ago about uh, the Rato casting method. Did I say that right? So I think uh, it's really applicable of this method when you read and you take notes. It's really useful when you plan to do a literature review. And I, that's why one of the reasons I picked this topic. And the second is really suitable for young students um, because they don't have much um, research experience, but they are still eager want to publish their first paper. So the literature review um, is really a good option here. So myself uh, is planning to do a sister, uh, systematic review too about expatriates and identity. Here I created a link here, but I forgot my flash drive is in, the, in my lab, so I couldn't show you. Um, but so there are some, um, not some, but there are one or two similar uh, articles already published uh, about in a similar field. Therefore, I have to think about how to approach um, writing this um, systematic review paper from a different angle. That's why um, it took a while for me to uh, decide what research question I want to address. And the third reason is I think through writing, through the process of writing a literature review paper, you can gain a lot of background information of that subject. Because my uh, dissertation will be about expatriates. That's why I think it's a really good opportunity for me just to learn as much as I can. And here is what is a systematic literature review? Um, simply speaking, is a type of review that um, um, try to summarize all the relevant articles uh, close to the research question you want to address. Um, but it's more systematic because uh, it aims to limit the systematic error and bias because you have to follow a series of protocols when you, um, from the beginning to the end, like how, what, ty what type of articles you want to choose and um, what methods uh, you, what kind of ma uh, methods are used in the studies you pick. So there, um, it's not just up to the reviewer's preference. Uh, therefore, uh, if uh, compared to the uh, traditional review, it's more a uh, scientific tool. Uh, if, um, they, uh, it can be used to summarize, appraise, and communicate the results. Okay. So this is a quick uh, comparison uh, between the traditional literature review and the systematic review. Uh, you can see uh, Robinson and Rowley, they uh, compared those two methods in a few uh, categories. And what is interesting, interesting to me is that um, systematic review 
and actually it can be suitable for journal publication. But if you just read a simple literature review, uh, it's usually not suitable for journal publication. Uh, that's because uh, uh, the differences between the methods and the numbers of papers they, they exam to uh, rigor. I just want to say rigor. So until now, um, some people may think um, it still seems uh, quite easy to do a systematic review paper. But actually, if you start doing it by yourself, you can see it's actually not that easy. So first, you have to uh, think if this method is appropriate to uh, to try to answer your research question, sometimes maybe it's not. You need to conduct an empirical research, um, research. And second, um, like what I just explained in the beginning, if there are already existing uh, systematic review, um, is it good time for you to do another one? And why do you think you can Comp not compete, but can you produce new outcomes uh, than, um, than the, the previous ones? And the third one is um, pretty uh, difficult for me. So how, if someone is already carrying out a review in the same area, but not yet published, uh, how do you know if a person is doing one but not published? This one is a little tricky for me. But I guess uh, the main point is like, if you want to do a literature review, you have to find nobody else has done it. And still you have to do it as soon as possible because you, you, you don't want to, uh, uh, you don't want for other people to, to write the paper first. And for the review question, it cannot be too broad, and it cannot be too narrow. If it's too broad, like, um, uh, you can have 500 papers that's um, almost uh, really hard for uh, to conduct a literature review systematic, especially your review group uh, doesn't have that many people. And if it's too limited, you only uh, generate five papers, the scope will be too narrow to produce a high quality uh, review paper. And finally, it's about the resources. I uh, usually it's about uh, finance and especially the, peop the people because it's really time consuming to conduct a review paper. Therefore, you have to consider all those factors before uh, you uh, decide to implement a systematic review. Okay. And here is, um, a step-by-step -step, uh, process of how you uh, implement a systematic review. It seems um, a lot, but um, we are all like, connected, so it's actually not that hard. The first one is to define the research question. This is um, the most Im one of the most important steps to do this, because um, you have to consider um, why you want to do this question and through what methods uh, you want to do it, what kind of articles, which decides what kind of articles you want to choose. This you will, you will take a while. And the second is you have to um, uh, establish your own review group. And yeah, and you can see here, um, the Jones and Gatcho. We suggested um, for the review group, um, it's better to be um, uh, it's better to be a balance between the discipline and the, uh, the experience too. And and you have to uh, produce a protocol. Like, um, for example, uh, we want to review the qualitative um, articles um, or we want to review other 
article published in this specific journal. So there are all type of um, requirements you can consider you want to apply to your uh, review study. And then you carry out the um, literature research, the research and with a discussion um, when you come uh, when um, uh, come, when it comes to the literature uh, literature search, it's like uh, would you include the great literature or not? Great literature is uh, for those um, not uh, non reviewed um, articles like working papers or conference proceedings, and these authors um, they want to recommend using those great literature um because they want to um you want to make sure the quality of your review is sustained by using the peer reviewed journal articles. But um when I see other people when they talk about how to conduct a meta analysis, they say you you want to include um as much as all the applicable um available studies you can find, even if not a peer-reviewed journal article. So I, I guess I think this depends on the study you want to do and also the protocol you uh, created with your review group. And and then uh, after you, you generate all your Articles you want to uh, further filter um, the, pay, the articles and check the if it if they meet your criteria. And here, um, like usually, people will ask how many articles do I want to include in my study. Um, now that depends on the research field. If it's um, mature, of course, you, of course you want to um, uh, include um, an ample size of the papers. But if immature, that doesn't mean you cannot um, do a review, a literature review. Uh, that's because you can still uh, establish a new theory on the basis of existing articles and based on those. Um, existing articles was uh, what information is meeting and therefore you can call for uh, future empirical research and because of this um, the review articles that are conducted in immature research field there will be less research question driven and focus more on synthesizing the basic foundations but some people, uh, if it's really, really immature, maybe you want to uh, wait a little bit for uh, to do a review paper. And then we come to the step eight. Your critical uh, appraisal, like uh, you have to examine the, the methodology we use in the study, um, the samples they get, and uh, those things. And when the next is to you summarize the primary studies, and uh, we will talk about this in the later slides. And this also comes with to discuss the uh, publication bias and other um, internal external bias. And the final is to write up the report. And this is um, a, a graph uh, to show uh, one of the of, uh, articles, but this is not in the field of management. Uh, this is uh, from, uh, I think, healthcare and medical uh, research. But this uh, is one of the uh, physical realization that to show like what kind of process uh, uh, and how the, the filtering process works in their um, 
um, study. I wanted to look up more information about this. I don't know how to say butcher plot, but but yeah, it is pretty um, like a visual of how they um, uh, narrowed down their selection of studies. You can check check further if you're interested. And and this way, and this uh, this graph this um, graph is more uh, commonly see uh, like uh, what we have done and uh, how did they uh, narrow their studies from uh, 796 to 27. And the main point is if you want to do a systematic literature review, you have to show to your readers, your audience, how did you end up um, like, uh, review this article? Because it has to be replicable for other people to repeat and get a similar results. And this is an example of a forest display. This is the uh, um, use used to ex review and then the quantitative articles. This is also um, an example from a medical uh, research article. I haven't found many of those in our field. Maybe um, there are some ones in the existing studies, but this is an example I borrowed from the other uh, disciplines. But it's really um, like a viralized and I think maybe we can consider using all those um, graphical displays and when, when we do the literature review. And about meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is also a type of systematic uh, literature review but it uses a specific statistic, a statistical technique um, because I personally haven't done meta-analysis, so you can see this slide is very um, simple and <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, I, I was looking um, into to uh, do one study with um, some uh, co-works from the lab, but um, I, I wasn't sure uh, if, um, if the current existing studies uh, allow me to do one uh, about the uh, expatriate and uh, identity, but maybe uh, some of us maybe can do um, a different uh, presentation about a uh, meta analysis itself. Because I think it's still, although it is um, under the category of systematic review, I think it's still a little bit different. So, And finally, the limitations. Um, there are uh, four limitations I have seen um, in uh, research articles. The first is um, doing a systematic um, review paper does not overcome the problem that were already existed um, in the studies you selected. So this is something um, that we cannot address um, in, in when doing a systematic review, but you can improve it by uh, like, uh, designing a protocol and select um, appropriate studies that meet your criteria. That is one way. And the second is publication bias. Um, uh, still, uh, you select those publications um, by yourself and you're more, if you're people tend to pick those ones that have more like, dramatic effects. Um, so this is publication bias. And the third is uh, about the uh, interpretation of the summary results. Um, uh, this one is, um, for example, maybe sometimes the studies emphasize uh, on the, uh, sam the sample characteristics but um, therefore, you cannot uh, simply um, test 
the aggregated pull effect because it does not address the characteristics. For example, if one study focused on like a woman, you know, woman employees um, from 30 to 40, you cannot aggregate uh, that study to all the women or all the employees. Um, and the fourth is um, even you label your paper as systematic review, it does not guarantee that the review was conducted uh, with um, due rigor. So you um, still have to see the methodology of how did you do your review, uh, what articles you uh, include. Um, therefore, um, I think I read somewhere um, out of all the review papers, like uh, maybe once more than one third is actually wasn't appropriate or uh, conducted. Uh, therefore, their review result uh, was not um, um, does not produce high quality uh, outcome. So regarding this is a closing mark for uh when it comes when for this presentation also uh commenting to the uh, limitation so it is uh, not in, uh, possible to conduct a per 100 percent perfect uh systematic review paper but that is that is fine um as long as we try to focus on the utility or what uh, what can be uh, learned from a systematic review and although we repeat many times we have to focus on um, following the protocol we we create with our uh, review group but we have to be flexible also uh, to be able to uh, improve the quality of the overall findings, but also, uh, how to say, mm, what I want to say, if we just follow the rigid uh, protocol, uh, maybe sometimes uh, the, it won't tailor to our research question or just to apply to the certain uh, the field we want to examine. But we have to be both flexible and also um, follow the, the primary protocols that will uh, generate the, the, the greatest outcome uh, within our uh, capability. Yes. And here is a reference for today's. Um, uh, presentation, you can see um, some of them not in our field, it's in the uh, discipline of um, medical study. And in the last one, I included a um, further resource of how you can do a systematic review. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for the sharing. Now it's the discussion time. Is there any question, any comment? Liu Ting, do you have any to share? Yeah, thank you very much, Xiaoyin. This uh, early morning, this uh, wake me up in a very good way from my sweet dreams. Yes. Um, and I, I wonder that, could you please back up to the uh, that pro sorry, process, the process of the... Uh, Yes. So here, uh, that I wonder that what uh, first we should have a like research question, right? Yeah. But, but without reviewing, how can we get the research question? I mean, it's it is, I mean that this research research question should be the gap from after literature review, or first we should set up a research question and start and then start the systematical what's that re uh, review. So which is which should be put first? Well, this one for me is like a 
you you decide a uh, define the research question based on your um I would say existing existing knowledge of how you um yeah existing knowledge but I guess through the you define the research question it has not to be it doesn't have to be the final um final final decision or I want to uh, explicitly study this research it can be it, it can be like a how to say a, like a, a, like a, a within some scope I want to see what's happening yeah and also many people um they like say uh, I want to see like there's a review paper I want to see um the recent 20 years publication in this um, in this journal, blah, 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 blah. So that is their research question. What's the trend of the publication in this journal? And that doesn't um, involve extensive uh, literature review of, of that time. Does that make sense? Okay. And one, uh, for example, you have a basic uh, research question and you have your group of people and could you please make it a little bit sim simple that because there's like step 12, that I mean that what is the most important part for the for the uh, for this review process? Yeah. yeah, you see, when I explain, I didn't explain all the twelve steps. I just <laughs> jump from one to one. Well, I think the define the question and get your uh, review a group, and then do a protocol and visual research. And from from step five, six. Um, there can be like a summarized as you just further filter the studies you, saw, you get and then you get the data and then you exam the data. Yeah, and finally you just consider the, the bias it can be existed. And then you write. Okay. So uh, for example, if you have five people that not five maybe too much but three for example three of us will go we, we are going to review a topic for example expatriate and mm -hmm. uh, first we will go to where to find the paper yeah so this uh is, is this uh, the, will be decided in when you decide a protocol like go oh, we want to uh exam paper in those um uh, like, uh only some papers we can find from the web of science. It depends on what database you want to go. Do we want to include articles that can be found on Google Scholar? Um, mm -hmm. That is up to the all to the re review group decision. Okay. Yeah. Is there any uh, software that we can use? For example, for example, we have uh, uh, for example, in expatriates. I think more than five thousand papers. Mm -hmm. more than 5,000 more than 5,000 papers in this area in this maybe 10 years so is we have to use our hands to write everything or there's any for example like uh, uh, qualitative study the software that we can use to help us in the reviews uh, process like a like a reference manager but no, because in qualitative, actually, we got a lot of uh, like interviews uh, that we will use at, uh, well, for example, Atlas uh, TI or like the Naval. Well, I don't use that, but I don't know. But they have, there are some kind of uh, software, and you can download mm -hmm. your uh, your uh, your data, qualitative data, and then you th this software can help you because it is just too. For me, it's a very big job, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I don't know that uh, if my personal, what's that, memory can help me to remember all of the things. So for example, I found something in this paper, I found something in this paper, how, how can I, I can do that? I mean that I don't, I don't, actually I don't mind that what is literature, like systematic literature review is, and I, what I care is that how to do that. Mm -hmm. But in the practical way, how to do that is my question. Okay, so uh, this meeting is running out of time. You have to upgrade in 10 minutes. I didn't know there's a limit on personal recording. Last time it was fine. That's weird. Um, okay, so uh, just quickly wrap up. Um, so for the 
uh, steps, I think, uh, also how to define the question. Because lately I was doing a systematic literature review all by myself. So that, that's not very credible approach, but uh, it's a very good uh, way to organize the literature review. So um, to define the question, sometimes you, as uh, um, Jiang said, it's uh, based on your experience. Because at the beginning, I believe, for instance, meta analysis, systematic literature review, as approach was very well uh, used in medical science. So they usually came from clinical um, cases that they want to prove, for instance, this medicine has uh, um, effect on patients in what way or in, in how, how strong it can help improve the health of the patient. So it's very empirical. Um, experience they want to verify so they look into cases of the medical papers for this kind of empirical um, evidence to prove or reject their um, question so later it got um, spreading to the social science um, area and uh, another way is to um, use the existing uh, systematic literature review um, to see the identifying gaps um, by other scholars, because usually no matter which field you enter, more or less there's at least one systematic literature review existing already. So I'm currently doing um, another systematic literature review with a group of scholars. So that's what we did. First, we identified the um, as many as possible systematic literature review papers from the topic we are interested in. So we basically identifying first like the keywords we are interested to study, the, the, the broad terms we, we have, for instance, entrepreneurship education. So we read about uh, 20 uh, questions mm -hmm mainly summarizing patterns, themes, um, gaps, this kind of paper. And then we decided to narrow down to, for instance, youth entrepreneurship and uh, um, non-formal education. So that's, uh, that's how you narrow down, narrow down. If at the beginning you don't have a, a specific question, then by this kind of approach, you can find more specific keywords and more specific gaps. And uh, about the software, I think, well, systematic literature review has two types to report in the end. One is matter analysis, one is narrative analysis. So for the matter analysis, um, for instance, you can find several software, including Mix2. That's, that's one I was uh, I purchased to do meta analysis software, um, meta analysis. So if you search on Google, you will find something else. But to identify, for instance, the patterns and the clusters, um, you can, in qualitative analysis, uh, we have Envivo. There's a thematic uh, trend analysis there. So if you import your literature, they are going to identify the keywords and then patternize them in order to show you the themes. And from there, you can, you can basically interpret. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a very, very interesting approach to start the um, research as Jiang suggested. And there's definitely um, a lot of discussion about how to improve this approach as well. So I wanted to share with you like, uh, um, uh, the paper I just did for a conference, but I have like five minutes, 32. Should we try and let me see? Um, I, think I know why 40 minutes for Zoom if we use our personal account. If we have more than three people, it's limited to 40 minutes. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. why last the time it didn't have the, the limit. Yeah, I could only have two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. My account if, if one, because Amai is the licensed. I think it's time mm -hmm. limited. Oh, really? So can you, I will stop sharing here. So then you uh, can. Uh, so I gave you a link and you come. Yeah, like you, can, you can send the link to, to our email or to the Slack. Okay, a Slack. Slack. I haven't done the slack, so so just uh, I will so email then. Okay, email. 
I think we can. I can. I can. I can, I can download. No, no. Uh, you can just uh, send us here, so we all have the link at the moment. Please stop the the that one because oh, I'm kind of getting fine with. Okay. I'm just yeah. A link. Sorry. <laughs> really, three persons and then we have forty minutes. Oh, these people. Yeah, the last time I want to create a Zoom, but I I found that so I told Sun Sui, oh, can you can you create a Zoom for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you go to this close? Okay. 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 The first link, right? Yeah. You want to leave? I'm gonna copy here. So I just leave and wait you there. <laughs> 